We talk a lot about the left engaging in revisionist history that is warping the story of America, its struggles, successes, and its heroism. The 1619 Project has come into focus for its lack of accuracy, but it's also, but is it also doing an injustice to the story of black Americans? Joining us now to discuss is civil rights pioneer and the founder and president of the Woodson Center, Mr. Bob Woodson. Uh, Mr. Woodson, Pleased to be here. It, it is a privilege to have you, sir. Uh, you and uh, William Shambra wrote a wonderful op-ed in the Wall Street Journal this past week entitled, Remember to Tell All of Black History, in which you criticized Hulu's docu-series, The 1619 Project, for focusing too much on victimhood. Talk to us about how we approach the topic of black history with proper perspective. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on. Uh, I think it's a distortion. Uh, no one should be defined by the worst of what they used to be. America is a country of redemption. And for 1619 to define America only in terms, uh, and through the black experience, through the lens of slavery and oppression, is a false narrative. It's incomplete. Mm -hmm. What we do at, at, in uh, 1776 at the center is we must show a balance. Uh, black America... Uh, succeeded, they built railroads, two railroads. We had 20 blacks who were born slaves who died millionaires. We had hotels. Uh, so we have to tell the, the true story of black America, mm. uh, not just the distorted one. It's, you mm. know, that's, that's, like, that's like trying to assess someone's net worth by only talking about how much money they owe, their deficits. In order to get what your true value is, you got to you got to compare your deficits against your assets. Well, the assets in black America has been self-determination uh, and, and our history of having responded uh, aggressively and positively to oppression. Yeah, it's just uh, so so well put, Mr. Mr. Woodson. Um, you you pioneered something called the neighborhood empowerment movement that that focused on. Um, not on, on government programming, but on assistance that really led to real individual empowerment. Uh, there are some recent studies that show that black families are leaving cities like New York. I think it's as many as 10 percent. You know, public housing is a mess. Schools are failing in a lot of these urban environments. Crime is spiking. Uh, in New York, in New York uh, black New Yorkers are 23 percent of the city's population, but there's 67 percent of the homicide victims. The, mo the models that have been tried to sort of lift up the black community, they seem to be failing. What needs to change? Well, first of all, we have to realize that many people on the left claim falsely that the problems today are a legacy of slavery and discrimination. It's not so. When whites were at their worst, we were at their best. Uh, we, we had five high schools at the turn of the century in five major urban areas that had crumbling buildings, half the budgets of, uh, of, of white schools, and also uh, crowded used textbooks. Yet every one of those black schools in 1919 out-tested every white school hmm. in those cities. Uh, in Bronzeville section of Chicago in 1919, uh, we had 731 black-owned businesses, 100 million in real estate assets at a time were being redlined. Yeah. So the question is, if we were able to achieve these great social and economic improvements in the midst of Jim Crow, why are we are not able to do this in cities for the last 50 years who've been run by black politicians? Yeah, yeah. So Mr. obviously race isn't it, isn't it? Mr. Woodson, yeah, the, the lives lost, the, the statistics are very stark when you look particularly at the inner city. Why is there this intransigence on the part of a big chunk of our politics to change the way that we approach uh, the, the empowerment of the black community? We first, we must realize that it was not racism and, and discrimination that did it. It was government policies in the 60s. Thomas Sowell d d uh, uh, documents that poverty was being dramatically reduced between 1945 and mm -hmm. 1965. That's right. But, but, but in the face of $22 trillion being spent on poverty programs, where 70 cents of every dollar went not to the poor, but those who served the poor, what we did with these policies is separate work from income. And as a consequence, the black family went to, to a spiral hmm. and went down. And as a consequence of the problems that you're witnessing today...